get the recording going here. All right, so welcome, as I said, to the CLIMB information session. Um, just a little bit of a background. Um, I see some new names out there, so I want to just give you a little bit of an overview of what Greater Rochester Chamber of Commerce does as uh, we are the organization that puts on the CLIMB program each year. This, this will be the fourth year um, starting this uh, summer slash fall. And uh, the Chamber is basically the Rochester Finger Lakes region's largest uh, business advocacy organization. Uh, the staff of the Chamber is comprised of a team of advocates um, who are connected to economic development, um, legislative and other business resources and uh, provide those to our membership of uh, over 1300 member companies. Uh, we also serve non-members, um, you know, future members as we like to call them, and, uh, and a great deal of uh, community partners and, and our sister organizations as well. And uh, the mission of the Chamber is to promote inclusive economic prosperity by connecting members and community partners with uh, the people, the services, the development programs like CLIMB, and, uh, and the networking opportunities that they need to succeed because we know, um, you know, success really is always uh, a team effort, even in business. Uh, so what is CLIMB? Um, you may have heard of CLIMB. It's, it's still a recently uh, new program. As I said, this is the fourth year. Uh, it is a 10 month business focused leadership development program for young leaders um, of this region. Uh, there are a number of other programs out there. Leadership Rochester is a great one. United Way is a great one. Um, but the Chamber really, we, we deal in business. And so this is a, a business focused program um, that also touches on a lot of the different uh, areas of, of community engagement that the Chamber um, is involved in. And, and really it's for young leaders, um, age 21 to 40 is the target audience um, for this program. Um, it helps them learn and grow together um, emphasis on, on the together, we really encourage the friendships and uh, ongoing relationships that I'm sure you'll hear about in our panel. Um, it's about making connections to each other and also to the, the speakers that uh, we bring in and that we give, uh, give our participants really unparalleled access to. I mean, the majority of our speakers um, invite their, the participants to reach out to them directly. Um, with email addresses, phone numbers, um, things that you can't find on Google. And, um, and with that cachet of, you know, being a part of the Chambers program um, really opens uh, a lot of doors. Um, and then really we're looking to provide insight um, both into the strategic workings of some of these really successful Finger Lakes businesses, but also into the region as a whole. Um, you know, what are some of the challenges and opportunities within the region? Um, where do we fit into the global marketplace? And how can you personally and how can you help your company uh, really leverage the, those connections and sort of, you know, grow and, um, and thrive? And then, you know, obviously we're young professionals, we're ambitious. Um, this program is about helping you ascend to new heights of leadership and success um, in your organizations and community, whether that's promotions, whether it's uh, leadership initiatives within your organization or whether it's things that you're doing outside um, with the nonprofit boards and, uh, and other opportunities. So really we want to empower, uh, empower our young leaders to take the next step and really uh, be bold um, with their future endeavors. So a little bit about the, pro uh, the components of the CLIMB program. Uh, this year, I will start out by saying, is going to be a little bit different, at least initially. Uh, one, of the, one of the signatures of the CLIMB program, as you'll see in the image here, has been our really hands-on experiential learning within the region. Um, we take bus trips, we do tours, uh, we get our hands dirty, we drink wine. And this has been something that this year um, we've been forced to pivot from it. As you guys know, um, the COVID crisis has been really difficult for a lot of in-person events and, and networking type opportunities. So we will be doing the program virtually uh, in 2020 to 21 until further notice, meaning if circumstances change and things seem safe and, uh, and we're following the, the leadership of the state and of um, Bob Duffy, who is obviously our, our regional um, coordinator for the reopening. We really hope to have some in-person events uh, as soon as possible 
And, uh, and that would be something that we would absolutely uh, look forward to providing, whether it's tours, whether it's happy hours. Uh, we know that getting together in person is really important, but we also have had uh, quite a bit of experience this year with virtual programming. And we feel really confident that we can provide um, an excellent program and even some uh, benefits, some, some national and uh, non-local speakers that we wouldn't really be able to get in person we'll be able to pull in uh, virtually. And we've already seen that a little bit at the end of last year as our, as our panel can, uh, can talk to. Um, and then one aspect, uh, I should say three aspects that will not be affected at all by uh, coronavirus. Um, we will still have our personalized leadership development curriculum uh, and that goes throughout the, the entire program. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, also our one-on-one -on -one executive mentoring will still be matched with an executive from our business or civic uh, community. And you will still be given the opportunity to connect with them, whether in person uh, or virtually at your comfort um, once a month for the duration of the program. And then the last portion of CLIMB uh, happens after you graduate. And that is uh, an invitation to the Future Leaders Advisory Council, which is uh, a subcommittee of the Rochester Chamber Board it is formed uh, from young professionals who have completed CLIMB and, uh, and we will talk about that a little bit later too. So the experiential learning, um, here you have a picture that shows uh, our nonprofit panel, which happened during our January event, public policy, um, advocacy and community. Um, this is just an example of uh, intimate conversations with CEOs, executive teams and frontline employees um, based around the themes of our curriculum, which um, we'll show in just a moment. But really it, it explores a lot of different sectors of the regional economy. And, um, and we'll show you that list, which, is, uh, which we think is pretty exhaustive and is honed every year by the input of, uh, of our CLIMB graduates. Um, like I said, we're really looking at the business strategies that fuel the success of these organizations. And uh, that really ranges to a lot of different, uh, different topics. Um, like I said, understanding opportunities and challenges in the regional and global marketplace, really important information that you can bring back to your company and help to, um, even if you're not currently in a position of leadership, you can help to um, prove your value as, as someone who can uh, innovate and help drive your company forward. Um, and lastly, but very importantly, uh, we do bring in community and political leaders to discuss to discuss crucial issues facing this region. Um, you know, we're a business organization, but we believe that business has an imperative to uh, to do good wherever we can in the community. So um, we've discussed issues of race, of health disparity, transportation, um, all types of different topics come up because um, that's you know that's what we care about. We care about. Um, making the community better and inclusive prosperity. So um, those topics are interwoven throughout um, a number of the curriculum days. So here's the curriculum. I uh, just wanna share a little bit. Um, this is uh, tweaked for this year based on share. really great feedback that we've already uh, received from the last class. So thank you all of you who completed our survey. We um, really carefully take this back. Okay, seems to improved. Okay, so our curriculum this year um, in August will begin with uh, at this time a virtual kickoff and mentorship orientation. Um, that is for both our executive mentors and our program participants. Um, we go through what's expected for the mentorship curriculum um, and really set the expectations um, for that aspect of the program because after that point we really let the mentors and the, and the mentees uh, set their own schedules and, and go at their own pace. And then September will begin our first program day with Agritech and New York Beverage, uh, October Technology, Gaming and Innovation, November, we will explore economic development and entrepreneurship. Uh, December, arts and media, always a really um, exciting program day. Uh, January will be policy, advocacy, and community, which you saw in our photo there. 
Uh, February, we focus on uh, optics, photonics, and imaging, which is uh, known as OPI, as well as next-gen manufacturing. Uh, March, health and education, uh, sometimes referred to as meds and eds, some important economic pillars of our region. Uh, April, we will look again at natural resources and tourism, another big driver for the region. And uh, in May, we will look at brand building, marketing, and PR, um, not only as it pertains to our local companies, but also as it pertains to ourselves. Um, how do we build our own brands? How do we market ourselves um, as young leaders and, and you know, sort of use all that knowledge that we've accrued um, to really take the next step in our careers? All right, so next I'll talk a little bit about the personalized leadership development. Um, the gentleman you see here is Andrew Brady, um, a young leader in his own right in our community. He is the president of Rochester Young Professionals and uh, Conscious Capitalism chapter of the region. Um, he is also the chief, um, what is it, chief opportunity officer at uh, the Accelerate team, which is a leadership development company. Um, and he helps facilitate our Accelerate Your Climb curriculum, uh, beginning with a personalized report. Uh, we have every participant take uh, a quiz to, uh, it's more than a quiz, it's pretty in-depth, uh, and it gives you a, a lengthy report that we break up into chunks and we examine throughout the course of the year, and it really highlights your areas of strength and improvement, and um, we do a number of workshops, both um, in person there during the program days, and also homework that you take to your colleagues, your family, your friends. Um, and we've had some just really amazing feedback on, on that aspect of the program all three years. Um, it's absolutely one of the most important uh, aspects of CLIMB because it focuses on um, that critical internal foundation um, that allows great leaders to motivate and inspire. Um, and uh, Andrew has a great progression you know, leading self, leading others, leading organizations, and then ultimately changing the world if, if that is your goal. Um, so some of the topics that we cover in, in, in Accelerate is emotional intelligence, servant leadership, conscious capitalism, um, some really great, really cutting edge uh, topics in, in the leadership world. So um, we love that portion. And, and our panel, I'm sure we'll touch on that a little bit. And then last but not least, um, the one-on-one -on -one executive mentoring, um, which was new last year. Um, we launched it for the first time. Here you see a picture from our kickoff, which was in person. Um, last year, you see Justin Roy from the city of Rochester. He was um, a fabulous mentor for us. Um, and we, we really take time to match each participant with an executive mentor that we feel can give them an opportunity uh, to grow and for insight and hopefully for lifelong friendship. Um, and, you know, it's, it's too soon to tell. We, we just wrapped the program in May, but um, we're absolutely so happy with, uh, with the relationships that we sparked this year and looking forward to, uh, to that again next year. We've already had a number of executives volunteer um, to be mentors and, um, you know, just looking forward to making really, really solid matches again this year and, and uh, going into year two. So like I said, um, you meet and connect monthly with your mentor. It's at your uh, scheduling. So, you know, it's up to you to have phone calls, do lunches, Zoom calls, absolutely. Um, some of our mentors and mentees met more than once a month, um, but we just ask, we, we think once a month is good, especially to um, explore the specific leadership challenges that we lay out in our curriculum. And you can see, um, Ryan is holding our, our mentorship guide right there. So we provide that for everyone. Um, and it really lays out this curriculum. So um, you're not just sort of tossed in with your mentor and talk about whatever, talk about the weather. Uh, you really get a very, um, a very uh, in-depth sort of uh, prompt sheet for each uh, curriculum month. So August, work-life balance, September, self-motivation, October uh, is about change, navigating and advancing. Um, November, busting through career roadblocks. Uh, December, we look at building and fostering trust. January is all about team performance and managing internal stakeholders. Um, February, uh, workplace and or regional politics. We do have some climbers and mentors who are sort of moving and shaking in that world. Um, so we absolutely wanna open it up. We, we do wanna 
uh, inspire people to uh, go for office. Um, so we, we really uh, encourage that. Um, March, navigate, or I'm sorry, negotiation and self-advocacy. April is a continuous learning topic. So depending on the industry or the interest area of the mentor and mentee, um, we encourage them to explore a specific, um, maybe industry related topic. Um, and we provide some resources for that. Uh, and then May, it's, uh, it's all about community engagement and philanthropy. Uh, we believe that, especially here in Rochester, that's a, an extremely important part of any young leader's life and resume. Um, so our mentors can really um, help to uh, help, help their climbers navigate. Um, and last year we actually had uh, a mentor help a, a climber get onto a couple different nonprofit boards. So um, we love to see doors being opened like that. Um, I will just touch a little bit on our Future Leaders Advisory Council, and then we're going to hear from, uh, from the chair of this group in just a little bit. Um, so the FLAC, as it's known, um, is a subcommittee. Um, it provides key in insight and engagement with Rochester Chamber staff and the board. Uh, it furthers initiatives as determined by the chairs and membership. So it's really up to this group to determine what are the things that they care about and they want to work on. And uh, in just the, the few years that we've had the FLAC so far, um, this group has been one of the most passionate and actually getting things done group that I've seen in a long time. Uh, and just some of the things that they've uh, accomplished is uh, the Campus Rock Initiative, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, the mentorship program was fully a project of the FLAC, um, writing it, setting it up, facilitating it. Uh, and then also we're, we're moving into a space of, of advocacy of really helping to educate young leaders on, um, on the choices they have in government. Um, we know that there's information out there, there might be a few debates here and there, but you know, are we really getting uh, insight into where, how these leaders feel on specific issues that matter to us? Um, so that is something that the FLAC is, is working on right now. Um, so I will just uh, start to wrap up here and we can move on to the exciting part with our panel. Um, but these are the qualities that we look for in a CLIMB participant. Um, leadership, obviously, whether it's been demonstrated in the community or within your organization or even within your own life. Um, we're looking for, for people that, that want to be leaders in their own right. And we know that means different things to, to everyone. Um, vision. Um, you know, we want people that really believe in Rochester and, and see Rochester as being um, a, an a amazing place um, and playing a role in that, um, which goes into the impact. Uh, we, we're looking for people that, uh, that are ready to make a difference. And lastly, we think integrity is very important um, in leaders of all shapes and sizes. So just a little bit about the application process, which is outlined more in depth on our website. Um, really, we look for two main uh, materials. The first is your letter of intent, um, which as it sounds, um, why do you want to be a part of CLIMB? How do you embody those qualities of a leadership, vision, impact, and integrity? And then the letter of recommendation can come from your supervisor or from someone that you work with or someone that's sponsoring you for the program. And again, it looks to describe those, those four qualities that I mentioned. Uh, and then also we ask for a resume. Um, that helps us to, especially to match you with your mentor. Um, similar backgrounds can be really uh, good matches for, for that. And also a headshot, just so uh, I can recognize you when we have our new group of, of 30 or so individuals. Um, I really love to just get to know everybody and, uh, and, and we love to show you off too. We always um, do a press release with our new class and then when you graduate, um, we're always really proud and, uh, and we want to show off our next uh, generations of, of chamber leaders. Um, so the cost, uh, has, we've, we've discounted the cost considerably this year with it being a virtual only program. Um, so it is $9.50 for members and then $11.50 for non-members. Um, something I really want to stress this year is, is our scholarships. Um, we've always made scholarships available but um, we really have an imperative this year to make this available to as many leaders as we can physically accommodate um, because we know 
how difficult uh, this is for, for companies. We know that training and development budgets are getting slashed. Um, and we think that leaders are more important than ever. Um, and, and we want to we want to facilitate that. And quite frankly, you know, we have a little bit less of an overhead this year with virtual um, and we're able to offer uh, even more scholarships. So if you are seeking a scholarship, um, please just indicate your need, whether it's in that letter of in intent or whether it's in the email to me. Um, ask that you send the documents uh, to my email there, shannon.ely at greaterrochesterchamber.com. And those are due by the end of the month, July 31st, 2020. Um, if for any reason you need an extension on, on getting any of those particular materials, um, please let me know, but, uh, but just do indicate your, uh, your interest by July 31st of this year, as we are going to be looking to um, schedule and, uh, and hold our kickoff uh, before the end of August, and then uh, start the program off in September. So um, at this point, I know I just sort of barreled through a lot of information. I hope I answer more questions than I raised. Um, but I just want to open it up to any any just general questions about the program before we go uh, to our graduate panel. So anybody, if you want to throw a question in the chat or just speak up, um, please feel free. I'm looking in the chat. Any general questions? All right, I hope it's just because I was so thorough with this PowerPoint. <laughs> but if any come up, um, please let me know. Um, so great, now, now to the point that we've all been waiting for. Um, I want to introduce our CLIMB graduate panel. Um, as you can see from their years of graduation here behind their names, um, these are the years that they graduate, we have a good list. Um, Josh Bosey um, is at TransCat. He graduated just this past year and was able to experience three virtual events. Um, so thank you, Josh, for joining us. Um, we also have Katie Claire from Paychex. She was also in Josh's class, just finished up um, last month. Uh, Shaquana Divers um, at Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield is one of our OG climbers. She was in the very first class, um, original guinea pig. Uh, so thank you so much, Shaquana, for joining us. Um, and then Joe Sayer at Simon Business School. Um, he was in our second year. Uh, he is also our flat co-chair currently, just stepped into the role. Um, so look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for joining us, Joe. Um, and last but not least, we have Courtney Stiles from Redcom. And she is uh, from this last year of CLIMB as well. So thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can showcase our wonderful panelists. And we will get started. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll go alphabetically. We'll start back with Josh. But I was hoping that you uh, could just introduce yourself briefly and tell us what career or personal accomplishments uh, you have experienced since completing the CLIMB program. Absolutely. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Josh Bosey. I currently work for TransCat. Um, I am a customer success manager. Um, basically what that means is I am a uh, relationship manager essentially for the portfolio I manage um, as a conduit between them and my company TransCat. So it's a lot of relational, um, it has a large relational component, uh, which has been vital with the, uh, the skills learned in the client program. Um, I would say probably one of the, the best career uh, accomplishments since graduating um, or uh, going through the program was really learning how to advocate for myself and, and learning what uh, I felt was important and what I wanted to accomplish in my career. Um, and through that self-reflection and, and applying some of the tools and skill sets learned in the, in the program, especially in the Accelerate program, I uh, really pushed to get to where I am now and explore opportunities that I felt would be best matched with my skill set. So um, I really owe my current position and, and where I am to the CLIMB program and uh, the skills and uh, learn there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Josh. Yeah, you got a 
great new gig there. Yes, I did. All right, Katie, we'll turn to you. Thank you. I'm Katie Clare, and I'm a program manager at Paytax within the Emerging Products Growth Strategy Division. So that's a mouthful, I know. Um, what that means basically is I it, it feels like a product development slash sales role, kind of one in, rolled into one. So I worked work especially closely with the sales teams at Paychex, and I try to sell to them, if you will, um, the latest and greatest products at Paychex, knowing that they're client facing, so then they can go out and promote these products that my division works so hard to really get off the ground. Um, I would say something that I'm really proud of that happened um, with while I was going through the client program was toward the tail end. So I definitely can give a lot, if not all the credit to the skills that I gained through the client program was that I was named the um, one of the MVPs within my division for Paychex third quarter. So they're on their own fiscal calendar. Um, so for Paychex third quarter, I was uh, named one of the MVPs within my division. So it was a huge honor. I was really, really excited for it and very proud. And I, I definitely can say that a lot of that came from the skills I learned um, as Josh, Josh referenced the Accelerate leadership development component for sure, I think really came into play with that. Excellent. Great, thank you so much. Uh, let me find Shaquana here. Oh. Hmm, I think we might have lost Shaquana. So we'll hope that she will join back on. But in the meantime, oh, here, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can, Jaquan. I'm sorry, I just don't see your video. <laughs> um, my well, my video function isn't working, but I did have my photo up for a while. I, I saw that and now it's gone. Well, okay, well, you know what? I wish we could see your beautiful face, but um, I will turn the question over to you. Yes, yeah, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, be nice to see you all in person um, at some point. But welcome to the CLIMB Info session. Uh, my name is Shaquana Divers. I am the Executive Program Manager at Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield. So I serve on the leadership team for the Population Health Engagement Division. And in my role, I help to lead um, various um, initiatives that our senior leaders, our C-suite, our board are interested in doing to help improve uh, public health in our community and public health in our, um, across upstate western New York, since that's Excellus's um, catchment area and we're the largest um, nonprofit managed care system in um, upstate western New York. So uh, I joined, I'm the, I guess I'm an OG, like Shannon said, I've been in for several years. I was part of the early class. And my interest for joining was that at the time, I really wanted to broaden my network beyond what I had an extensive network in the industries of health and uh, social services and, and community type of efforts but I wanted to strengthen my network around more of the private sector and um, private industries across the Finger Lakes. So that, this experience gave me that. And what I feel is so healthy is that when we broaden our horizons beyond our network, it allows us to gain further relationships, which have helped to, I've been able to not only help myself professionally, but other women and men that were looking for jobs or looking for internships. Having this rich network has helped. Um, the leadership skills that were referenced um, in Accelerate, I especially liked, there's a uh, deep dive into values and you'll, um, there's a framework that Andrew will take you through to help you, um, maybe you, you know your values, but uh, how you, go deeper with you. If you say a value is something, but you're not really putting the time or the money into that, is that really your value? Or, is, or do you have an opportunity to um, do some things to allow you to really live your values? So I enjoyed that part of the, um, the climb experience. And then I really liked the sessions on policy, economic development, and, and entrepreneurship. Um, finally, I would say that 
one of my favorite parts was just being able to contribute and through FLAC. I stayed on as a member. I know Shannon's gonna hope you, you do that as well. I've been able to contribute to the development of the mentoring program, which is something I'm very passionate about. So I think it's great to not only have the opportunity to go through the program, but to be able to, to use those skills once you're, you're finished. Great, thank you so much, Aquana. Mm -hmm. All right, so we will go to Joe. Joe, tell us how CLIMB has impacted your life and career. Yeah, so first I just want to say thank you to everyone for taking time on this beautiful day to hop on yet another Zoom call. I'm sure after four months of Zoom, it, it, can, it can be tough. Um, yeah, I've, I've done a lot since I, I graduated CLIMB. I've joined a, quite a few boards. Um, the thing I'm most proud of, I became a big with Big Brothers Big Sisters. It's one of the happiest things I do. I've actually finally started to be able to see him again. My, my little name is DeAndre, he's nine years old, and he's an amazing kid, just went to the zoo yesterday. Um, and I really attribute a lot of that to Andrew's leadership coaching. It really made me a more, a more inclusive, caring, and, and empowering and confident um, leader, and, and really kind of helped hone um, what I thought was, prior to that, a strong leadership skill set, but you can al always grow. Um, but the two main things I've done since graduating CLIMB was one, as part of FLAC last year, I launched the Campus Rock Initiative, and that initiative is focused on driving economic prosperity here in Rochester by attract, attracting and retaining college students. And while it's still in its infancy, um, we got enough traction and movement to actually be swallowed up by an outside organization called Rock 2025, which is a, a conglomerate organization focused on driving economic prosperity. The next is um, I was recently named the co-chair of FLAC with uh, my co-chair Alana, Alana Stage, and, um, another Paychex employee. There's a lot of them on, on FLAC. Um, and it's really just about what we're gonna do next. John and Chelsea were absolutely phenomenal co-chairs to, to build up CLIMB and launch this amazing mentorship program that you all will have the opportunity to go through. Um, and now we're gonna launch a, an advocacy program where we're gonna be able to give the, um, the young professionals here in Rochester a voice, um, both at, at both the uh, community leader, business leader, and political leaders level, so. Great, awesome, thank you so much, Joe. Um, and we will go to Courtney. Hi, I'm Courtney Stiles, I'm from Redcom Laboratories. Uh, Redcom is a company that is in Victor, New York, and we engineer, design, manufacture, and support at our headquarters there in Victor, New York, advanced communication solutions to the federal government, to the DOD, and to the first responder markets. And I am a program manager there currently, but when I started the CLIMB program, I was a government account manager. And throughout the process of CLIMB and the Accelerate Leadership Program and the book that we had to read, uh, if I didn't have that, I don't know if I would have taken this new position, uh, but learning about challenging yourself, uh, I believe it was one of the chapters in the book and how challenge is really the crucible for greatness. And, you know, a lot of growth can happen uh, through change. And that drove me to accept a position that I may not have. Uh, my previous position was a little bit more sales, business development, where this one has a little bit more operations slant to it. So without that training from the CLIMB program and without the somewhat of a push to challenge yourself in your daily activities and at your job, uh, I wouldn't have done that. And so because of that, you know, the program management position, the accounts that I'm in charge of, uh, the account I'm in charge of now is the biggest one that we have in the company. So uh, I credit that to working with uh, this program and really trying to challenge myself to make myself uh, better and grow and learn and change. That's awesome, Courtney. Congratulations. I didn't know that. That's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um, I want to just stop at this point and see if our um, audience has any questions for the panelists at this time. Feel free to speak up, or if you think of something, put it in the chat. 
Um, I'll go ahead and ask um, my next question for the group. Um, maybe we can just start um, right back with Courtney and we'll, we'll go in reverse order. Um, but can you share your thoughts on the experiential learning portion of the program? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I really enjoyed the experiences. For me, one of the ways I learn is from people and learn by doing, not just reading about something. So being able to have these experiences where you go to the business, you see how they're set up. There's these panels uh, that talk about different uh, challenges that they were facing. They talk about opportunities and how they were able to take advantage of them. And it really just gets your juices flowing as to how you can bring that back to your own company and bring that back to your own life. Uh, so that was really amazing. And I really enjoyed the highlighting of the downtown Rochester businesses. I worked downtown at a company two years ago and just even in the last two years, the growth that Rochester has experienced with all the new businesses and all the new industries has, was really amazing to see. So I really enjoyed the experiences and also meeting everyone in the group. That was wonderful for me because it's nice to speak with other people in your same age bracket, going through maybe some of the same things in their lives or at their jobs. And it was very nice to have those, those conversations. Great, awesome, thank you. Um, oh, sorry, we'll go next to Joe, back to Joe. Yeah, so for me, it was really um, kind of everything Courtney touched on, but then also just like the opportunity to learn about things I didn't know about in Rochester, from like the Wegmans Organic Farm at the beginning to ending it with like learning about the sleeping giant that is Ledestri. Um, and along the way, like the Rochester startup community, hearing the story of three brothers, seeing High Falls from like a perspective that I didn't, I didn't know really existed. Um, learning about the triple bottom line at, at Fifeco, which is Genesee and going over to the Genesee County Museum and then um, learning about Constellation, how that cannabis is gonna have a huge impact here in Rochester, but that's not all they do. They're with talking about the New York kitchen. So, these tours really, really served to broaden my knowledge of the industry, the types of industry we have um, back here and the panels, um, as Courtney was saying, the learning from the people actually doing it was, was an absolutely phenomenal and eye-opening experience. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I'll never forget that High Falls. Uh, actually, we, we learned this year that they're gonna be taking that spot that we were on and actually making it into a real park and not just like a condemned building with a huge hole in the floor. <laughs> uh, awesome, okay. Um, we will go back to Shaquana. Yes, so I, I did appreciate um, the open and honest conversations <clears throat> that we were having with the various um, leaders when we went to tour the facilities. And um, I'm not sure if the theme was the same the, the following years, but it, I, I noticed that um, many of the companies we went to were longstanding companies, um, you know, even to Wegmans, like Joe referenced Ledestri, um, New York Kitchen. But at the time, they talked a lot about weathering storms and going through periods of real intense challenge. And I thought it was really foretelling where we are right now because some of these companies have been around 50, 60, maybe even 100 years. And um, they went through some hard times and they were really uh, open with us about how they, what happened when they went through it. Dixon Schwab will even talked about that and then how they persevered. So that I took from it because I had gone through, you know, different challenges and been at organizations, both nonprofit and private sector that have um, had had some tough times and as right now we're we're in the thick of it and maybe in the thick of it for a while so I really drew from that excellent thank you so much yeah that's that's a very good point um, Katie we'll go to you um, with your thoughts on the experiential learning portion of the program sure I mean I, I really can only just echo what everyone else has has said so far. I think Courtney, you especially, you were like taking the words right out of my mouth. Um, but I, I loved that part of the program. I, I remember every time we would get the agenda for what 
our day would look like for the next program day, I would be so excited and really looking forward to it. And I left every single day with my wheels turning. Um, it was inspirational. I know that sounds so cheesy, but it was. Um, it was just really thought provoking. Um, everything that these leaders in our community at these various businesses that, you know, for the most part, we all know and love. Um, just listening, listening to them speak about their own journeys and their company's journeys really was fantastic, fantastic to hear. Um, and I found myself a lot of times kind of seeing common themes between each of the days and what the various leaders had to say. Um, and they and they wouldn't even know that. Um, but yeah, I thought it was, it was a wonderful opportunity to learn a lot about Rochester and a lot more about the various businesses that I might not have known all the ins and out of otherwise. And it was just a wonderful opportunity to be able to, to see all these businesses right here in our community. Excellent. Thank you so much. And uh, we will go to Josh. Again, I, I would echo everything that uh, the past panelists have said. Uh, something unique uh, for me is that um, I'm not originally from Rochester, so I'm a transplant. Uh, I've been here for about three years. And this program and these... Um, program days had truly been an eye-opening experience for me. Uh, I really didn't know what Rochester had to offer prior to being uh, in this program and participating. Um, and it really ignited a sense of um, hometown pride, essentially. Even not being here uh, or being from here, uh, I, I consider Rochester my home now. So being able to learn all the different industries that are here and the passion behind these leaders and why they're here um, and why they continue to expand here has been amazing. It really allows me to become a better cheerleader and advocate for the area. Um, so when we're talking to uh, people who may work within our comp company, but not here in Rochester or um, some of the clients we may work with and really talking up the, um, the region. Uh, you don't know the, uh, the effect or the impact that that is going to have, but being able to be sincere and genuine because seeing it firsthand and understanding the true um, love that these companies do have for our area uh, is something I wouldn't have gotten unless I was able to take part in these. So, uh, there's obviously the, the certain program days that were amazing to be a part of. Um, just everything from, I believe it was Next Gen, where they, small businesses, startup can go and, and lease small spaces. And I had no idea that something like that existed. Um, or the, um, uh, the Cornell Ag Center, where we go and we're, we're looking at a company who is in the process of building their own facility, but they're taking basically scraps from other businesses that would look at it as waste and figuring out ways to use this and, and better the community. So there's just so many things that I didn't realize were a part of this community that I'm now blessed to have been able to, to be a part of. Great. Thank you so much, Josh. We'll stick with you um, and go right into our next question. Um, you all sort of did touch a little bit on um, the leadership development program facilitated by Andrew, um, but sort of what, you know, what was your biggest takeaway from the Accelerate Your uh, Climb curriculum? Yeah, um, I really think, I, I really enjoyed the DISC assessment. I know that sounds kind of cheesy and, and um, people might look kind of kind of odd at that, but I've done these assessments in the past and I've always said, wow, that's pretty interesting. And that's a little weird that they were able to figure those things out uh, just based on answering questions. But um, reviewing that report and how extensive that report was, um, was an amazing experience. That I'd say was probably one of the biggest factors in me understanding that I needed to make a career change. Um, and really pushing to, to find whether it was at my previous company or obviously I moved away, but um, what type of position um, was going to be best suited for my personality or my skill set and being able to identify those uh, characteristics and, and what makes um, a certain type of person tick, so to speak. Um, it was just, it was such a, uh, an amazing experience and I, I still have that report on my desk and I will look at it from time to time and um, if, I'm, if I'm having difficulty with 
trying to decide how I want to move forward with something, I'm going to look at that report to uh, kind of help reground myself and understand why I'm looking at something the way I am or why someone else might be looking at it a different way. Right. Yeah, I must say, I, I agree. I've taken a lot of different versions of disk assessments, but that was the first one that really kind of blew my mind. And I was mm -hmm. like, wait a minute, you understand <laughs> better than I do. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Okay, Katie, we'll go to you next. I totally agree. And that I think was one of my biggest takeaways from that part of the program as well. Um, so with the disk assessment, you have a different way of looking at yourself and understanding kind of what's making you tick, but then also you learn how to understand how someone else might operate or how they communicate the best. And with that, how you can then communicate with that person most efficiently. And I think it's been really amazing to put that into practice, both at work professionally, but then also in my personal life as well. So really just kind of taking the different aspects of that assessment and, you know, the work that we did in breaking that down and putting it into practice in real life and figuring out, okay, I know what it is I need to ask this person to do, again, be it at work or, or at home, um, what's going to be the most efficient way to, to have this conversation and really just kind of throwing away everything everything that we've been taught previously about the golden rule, treat other people how you want to be treated, but instead to recognize how that person wants to be treated and what's going to really motivate them to do whatever the task is as you both work toward that common goal. So I, I totally agree with you, Josh and, and Shannon. I think that was a great part of the program. Excellent. All right, we'll go to Shaquana if you can reach back that many years and, and remember what, what was your best takeaway from, uh, from Andrew's portion. Yeah, I was um, giving that some thought, and I really enjoyed the um, deep dives into the book, The Truth About Leadership. I'm a uh, bookworm, and I love reading on leadership, and so we all got auto autographed copies of, um, well, signed copies from Bob of um, The Truth About Leadership, but we read it together as a class, and we... Um, went through some exercises in between our sessions on different topics. So for example, I think credibility was one, um, integrity, um, things like if you're not, um, and I still have the book on my desk, but if you're not, if you don't have people kind of like following behind you um, or really being inspired by you, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, it questions, if you're really a leader, um, I'm paraphrasing. But I think that book was really relevant and I think it's a real good one for the times we're in right now. It's a really simple uh, read, but um, I like the fact that we were able to take our time throughout the 10 weeks and delved into the different topics. So I think the class is gonna enjoy that book if, if you all are still using it. Yes, we are. We, we use that book every year. We will be using it again this year. All the participants will, will have it mailed to them. Um, and uh, yeah, that has been a really great um, touchstone for that program. So awesome. Thank you so much, Shaquana. Um, Joe, how about you? Um, accelerate your climb. Yeah, so I kind of went into it like not excited about it because throughout my career, I've been through a ton of leadership trainings. And the first one I hear Andrew talk about growth versus fixed mindset, and I'm immediately like, I've seen this before. But I, I was extremely wrong. His, his monthly trainings, his homework assignments, the um, talent insights test, which is the DISC, disc assessment, um, not only made me a better leader, but a better teammate, colleague, friend, and person. Um, and I think it, it really weight, raised my self-awareness to like areas where I was weak. And not only does he address where you're weak, but he gives you strategies to turn those weaknesses into areas of strength. So overall, I thought that it was a um, phenomenal portion of, of climb. Um, I would say it had a bigger impact on me than the experiential learning portion, be just because it changed really who I was as a leader. Awesome, great, thank you so much. Uh, Courtney, go to you. Yeah, it was interesting as I was thinking about this question, and I definitely experienced personal growth uh, as a result of the leadership development. And of course, it helped me at my job. But as I was reading this book, I am a wife and also a mother of two little baby boys. And 
it, to me, I was like, well, of course, yeah, this translates to work. I never really thought about how it translates to home also, mm -hmm. you know, just like at home and at work, you can't be a do as I say and not as I do type person. And I don't know why that didn't occur to me before in a, a parent role versus a work role, but that I was able to take those lessons from that book and from that training and not only apply them to work, but also to my personal life uh, and to my home life and, you know, treating everyone just like uh, Katie and everyone said, about, you know, how they want to be treated. And that means, you know, parenting my two boys even differently um, and talking to my husband differently. So that is one thing that I realized and then also feel like I applied to, to my personal life and my work life, but just the personal side was a surprise to me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're all, you know, holistic individuals. You can't really separate any, any aspects of your life these days. Um, awesome. So I'm going to take a quick break in my questions um, and just check in and see if we have any from the audience. Um, if you wanted to pipe up or put it in the chat, we've got about six minutes left. So I um, just want to make sure that we're answering any audience questions that we might have. Um, but until I see any of those, um, I'm just going to ask Katie, Josh, and Courtney um, as a, a very special group that did get a chance um, to have the executive mentorship portion. Um, Katie, can you start and just share, you know, your takeaways and your experience from, from the one-on-one -on -one mentorship portion? Sure. Um, so I was paired with Courtney Kutrup. She is the CEO of Partners in Napier, so, which is a top marketing agency here in Rochester, if you're not familiar. So I completely fangirled every time I met with her or connected with her. Um, she's awesome. She's really cool and extremely smart, super successful. And she's also a mom. And I, um, I actually went through the program uh, pregnant with my first daughter. She is a climb baby, as Shannon liked to say. Um, when we last spoke, I thought that was perfect. So it was really fantastic to be able to speak to Courtney about work and um, you know everything that she's gone through to get to the extremely high level that she's at today, but also how she did that while also being a mom. So it was fantastic to be able to relate to her in that capacity. And she had great insight and suggestions for me and really just being able to pick her brain, quite frankly, um, and ask her different questions about what she found allowed her to be so successful professionally, but then also to be able to separate that and go home to her kids as well. So I, I think it was, I'm happy that this was part of the program and I'm thrilled to hear that it's going to continue going forward. Great, thank you so much, Katie. We'd love to hear that. Um, Josh, how about you? How um, how was your mentorship experience? Yeah, I'll say I started as cautiously optimistic. Um, I was very excited for the opportunity to learn from somebody who um, has kind of done it all before. Uh, my mentor, his name is uh, Dave Benetti, and he is currently the chief marketing officer for SWBR, so an architecture firm. Um, located in, in downtown Rochester. Um, from the very first moment uh, we met um, at our first meeting, I really, I changed from that ca cautious optimism to extremely excited and very lucky to have this experience. So Dave basically took almost the entire session asking me questions about me. What were my ambitions? Where did I want to be? Um, and one of the questions that I will never forget, and I will, I, I've already told him I'm going to steal it from him. And when I'm in a leadership position where I'm uh, looking to hire new people or train new people, I'm going to use it. But he asked me, he said, so do you want my job? And I, I was like, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you mean. He goes, well, I need to know what you want. Do you want to be in the C-suite? Do you want to be an individual contributor? Or do you want to be a mid-level manager? Do you want my job? And that way, when I know what your ambitions are, I know how I need to get, um, tailor our discussions going forward. Um, and I really appreciated that because it wasn't just a canned, um, I volunteered to be a part of this program, so I'm going to go through the motions. Dave really took the time to understand me and appreciate what I was looking for and making sure that um, I got out of the program what I was looking for. So. 
I still consider him a great friend. Um, we have a tentative dinner date for him and his wife to come to, to my house um, to say thank you. Um, and I, I really believe that he will continue to be a mentor of mine moving forward, even though the program is complete. That's great, Josh. I love to hear that. Dave, Dave is so great. And we absolutely, <laughs> we hope that he will join us next year and mentor a new climber. Um, that's, that's awesome. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> yes, but in a good word. Uh, okay, Courtney, we'll, we'll go to you um, for that question. So the mentorship was one of my favorite parts of the CLIMB program. I'm so glad that you guys implemented it and that you'll be doing it next year. To have someone outside of your company to talk to about work topics or situations that you're comfortable speaking with, it's just invaluable. And I was very grateful to have those monthly topics and discussions points, especially to start with, because like you said, we don't, we don't know this person. And we got into some deep discussions uh, about those topics. And we didn't always use the topics. You know, sometimes there would be a situation that we would talk about uh, with my mentor or with me that, um, you know, we wouldn't always use them, but it was great to have them because they were definitely great conversation starters. And so my mentor was from, uh, her name is Chelsea Conway and she's from BMAX Sales and Service. And so when you think of our two industries, you know, there's not much overlap you know, between a, a large trucking, leasing, sales and service company and, you know, the telecommunications industry. But it just goes to show you that it does not matter if they're in the same industry as you, management of people and leadership skills, that translates to all industries. And, you know, there were so many benefits from our relationship and things I was able to talk with her about throughout our time together. And I know we'll still continue, you know, our relationship. And, and even one of them was, you know, with this new position, talking to her about it. And she was able to help me, you know, successfully negotiate a salary increase, you know, during this global pandemic time, because I was able to kind of get her perspective from that level, that C-suite level, um, as to what, you know, she didn't like to see and to what, uh, when she was willing to uh, meet someone where they wanted to be when uh, they were asking, you know, for more money, essentially. And so mm -hmm. it was really great to just have her on so many different levels. And I am so grateful that you guys had that as part of the program this year. Excellent, great, thank you so much. Um, we are at six o'clock, um, so I wanna just see if we have any audience questions um, before we just have a couple closing remarks for anybody who's uh, willing to stay on. I was hoping that we could uh, start again with Josh and just really briefly um, being super uh, cognizant of the time. If you could share, uh, you know, why would you recommend the CLIMB program to our participants watching here today or, or even just a, a friend or a colleague? Yeah, absolutely. The biggest thing for me is I thought I knew who I was as a leader, kind of what Joe was saying. I thought I knew what my strengths were. I thought I knew what my weaknesses were. Um, the, 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 um, the leadership program with Andrew really opened my eyes and, and, and showed me that I really didn't know my style or what my strengths and weaknesses were and, um, effectively being able to change those. So it's, it's a absolutely worthwhile experience that you will not be sorry that you did. Thank you so much. Katie, how about you? I think... I think the leadership development portion is huge and it's something that everybody can certainly benefit from. Beyond that, I think that this program is fantastic and it's definitely something that you're going to want to be a part of if you're looking to find other young professionals who are ambitious and like-minded. It's a great networking opportunity for sure, to say the least. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity to deepen your knowledge about Rochester and our community and the various businesses and industries that we have here. And it will certainly deepen your pride for Rochester as well. Very well said, thank you so much. All right, we'll go to Shaquana. Why would you recommend CLIMB? I recommend it because um, leadership like any other skill needs to be cultivated. Um, you know, you go to college, you maybe go to grad school, um, you uh, start your job, but you have to be intentional, intentional about developing your leadership skills. And this program gives you that opportunity. It's a nice balance between experiential um, networking, peer-to-peer, -peer, 
and that accelerate curriculum. So you're getting leadership from a, a 360 degrees perspective, which I think will strengthen you. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, all right, we will go to Joe. So, I mean, I, I think CLIMB was an invaluable experience for both my personal and professional um, development. And I think part of it was, was the network that I built through CLIMB. And then part of it's the impact you're able to have after CLIMB with, with the FLAC. It's, it's really a phenomenal organization. And we're going we're gonna to make some waves here in Rochester and really give the young professionals a voice. Um, so I, but the biggest reason I would do CLIMB if I were one of you is the mentorship component. I am so jealous that uh, Josh and, and Courtney and Katie got to experience that component. I keep being like, Shannon, can we have like a mentorship for the Okay, you a mentor, Joe. I, <laughs> like, um, <laughs> I think that's by far the best, uh, best portion of it. You, I've, I've seen all the mentors. One of my good friends, Josh Jacobs, just graduated CLIMB as well. His interactions with his mentor were invaluable to him. It, it got him a promotion at work. Um, so it's that mentorship component is well worth the, the price of admission. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to hear about Josh too. All right, and we will go to Courtney um, for our last uh, recommendation of the CLIMB program. You know, I mean, everybody said it perfectly. So I, in the interest of time, I won't even add anything. Just go, just go do it. Just go sign up, apply. You won't be sorry. Awesome. Well, thank you guys all so much. Thank you to our panel. Thank you to our participants. Um, we are going to be making a recording of this session available to you and to everyone who signed up as well as sharing publicly. Um, and I am always available for any questions you might have. Um, we are really looking forward to hopefully seeing you all apply by July 31st. Again, just a reminder that we do have scholarships available and um, we're really committed to another great strong year, virtually in person, however we have to do it. Um, we are gonna climb this year. Um, so thank you all so much again, and I hope you all have a wonderful night. Take care. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Thanks for everything. Yep, bye-bye. You did a great job. Shannon.